Ah, brushes, lots and lots of brushes. And, you know, artists all have their favorite tools and the right job, you know, tool for the job, so to speak. And you can see, I mean, we've got <laughs> so many different kind of brushes that are at our disposal. And we all figure out, you know, with practice, what ones work the best for us. Um, you can see I'm kind of a mess. I don't keep my things as organized as perhaps I should, but yeah, you know, you'll see tons and tons of brushes and you can see these brushes go way on back there, but these are primarily the brushes I use mainly. And then I've got just, you know, some assorted brushes here and there, and there's different tools for the job. Okay. And I'm going to try to cover some of the brushes that I use the most frequently and how I use them. And uh, let's, uh, let's see what happens here. Hey everybody, everybody who knows me knows I've got a ton of brushes, right? And I'm pretty sure that almost every artist has a ton of brushes. And in today's video, I'm just going to show you what brushes I use and how, like why I use these brushes. Kind of a little demonstration on what different brushes can do. Uh, you know, it might be, um, you know, I might have a smusher <laughs> or, uh, you know, you've heard me talk about my swords. I have sword brushes, you know, that are shaped like this. So all different kinds of brushes for different jobs. And that's kind of what I'm going to show you today. So stick around. Maybe you'll learn something. <laughs> maybe, some, maybe you'll teach me something. And uh, again, so I'm so glad you're here. Thanks for being here. If you're my subscribers, thank you as always. If you're not, please consider subscribing. You know what to do, it's right there. And uh, yeah, and this is also going to be available on Patreon. So let's go ahead and jump into seeing how I use my brushes and what, you know, what is the right tool for the job. Now here you can see quite an array of paintbrushes. All of these paintbrushes have a very specific job for me. And sometimes I'm able to use one brush to do multiple tasks, but I'm gonna go over and talk a little bit about what I have in front of you here. Now, these three are um, filberts. This, um, they're all by Rosemary, and these are what are ivories. Now, the ivory line of brushes are a synthetic, kind of like they're softer than boar brushes, but they're, they're very resilient and wonderful. Um, you know, they're workhorse brushes for me. And here, I've filberts are by far what I use the most. Now that's, that filberts meaning the shape of the brush. And this is what they call, I think is an Egbert, which is a very long, um, a long, long, long filbert. And what that does is it allows me to hold a lot more paint so I can carry a load of paint longer on the um, canvas that I'm working on or the surface I'm working on. So these are ivory filberts. These are the daggers and you hear me talk about the dagger brushes. Now this is a little tiny um, one-eighth dagger. This is a, I don't know, three-eighths inch dagger here. And then this is a sword brush. It's very similar to a dagger in the shape because it's angled, but it's longer. And again, with it being longer, it will hold a little bit more paint and carry a long, long stroke. So I'm gonna demonstrate how these brushes work, but I, you know that I use daggers. If you've been watching my YouTube and are one of my Patreon patrons, you're gonna know that I use these brushes a lot for fur and especially, or long hairs, or any time I need a long flowy line, or even a short line, these are great for hairs. Now, this, um, these brushes, I'm going into some of the synthetic, um, like mongoose and, um, yeah, these are all synthetic. This is actually, this is a 278 series. This is a, um, one of the long filberts, also rosemary. All these, almost all these brushes so far that I'm talking about are rosemary brushes. So this is the 278 series of their long filbert. So it's a natural hair brush. I um, believe it's mongoose, if I'm not mistaken. And I like to do those as application, but I can do a lot of blending with these brushes as well. And that's why I am particularly fond of the Eclipse line of brushes by Rosemary because they're great for application as well as blending. So here you have, but this happens to be an actual natural bristle or natural, excuse me, natural hair brush. 
278 series. These are Eclipse pointed rounds and you can see they're very pointy and that allows me to get into some little tight little areas and get some detail work in and I really do like those a lot. This is a liner or a rigger. Let's see, this says it's a rigger. And this is the Shiraz line of brush through Rosemary. Now, I do have other brands of brushes, believe it or not. Um, this is probably an old sable that was probably my mom's and she gave it to me. And this is one of Rosemary's sables. And I use sables predominantly when I'm doing portrait work. It allows me to do, and I, it allows me to do a really, a great blend. So when I'm going transitioning between different flesh tones, this these are wonderful. Sables are awesome brushes. And um, so yeah, that's what would I, and I generally don't use them for application, although sometimes I do. <laughs> it's, you know, rules are always meant to be broken, but I usually use my sables almost only for blending. Now, here's just some other brushes. Now, this is a little funky little brush called a Smusher and also by Rosemary. And you can see that it's, it's a, a blunt, fat little brush, okay? And these are great for like, if you're doing foliage in the background and you don't want it to be very detailed, you want those colors to be soft, it's a great blender. It smushes, as the name implies. It smushes the paint into the canvas and allows you to have just a really nice blendy soft edge. And then these are just larger brushes. This is just a uh, an Eclipse Filbert. Um, again, great for application as well as blending. And then these brushes are almost always, these three brushes are ones that I will use. Like this is a, 270, a 279 series, it's a flat. I almost never use flats, but I, this came I guess I got this in a in a set of paints that I got from Rosemary, or so, excuse me, a set of brushes that I got from Rosemary. And this brush became one of my great blending brushes. So when I'm making transitions in sky, so you know, oftentimes sky is usually lighter at the horizon line, and as you're as you go up on your canvas, it's usually darker at the top of your canvas. This allows for me to get a very seamless blend in my color uh, in my color as it goes up in the sky. So this for me is really good for blending. Now these big brushes here, this is a Simmons uh, Extra Large 50. It's a synthetic, um, it's a synthetic sable-ish kind of brush. I use this, especially for my larger canvases for blending, a very similar way I use this brush. That's what I use this one for. Uh, it's great for blending. And this brush, and you probably see me use it in, in one of my videos. It's one that I inherited from my mom and it's a, they just call this a, hmm, if you can actually read anything on here, a bristle round. It's huge, right? But it's very much shaped like my smusher. And I have used this too for some of my larger canvases, for some of my interesting texture. It's really stiff. I mean, this is because this is an actual boar bristle. So it is really stiff. And often you, you'll only see me use these on some of my bigger pieces. Uh, this on a small canvas, it's, <laughs> it would be lost. I mean, it would not, it's just too much brush, too much brush. And again, you know, this particular video is about the right tool for the job. So I'm going to give you a little demonstration of how I use these brushes and what they can do. And I hope this helps you in your uh, painting, you know, so you can see some of the techniques that I use with these brushes and you can apply them to your own painting techniques. For this demonstration purpose, I'm just using just a few colors and I just threw down some yellow ochre, little uh, burnt umber, titanium white and black. That's all I put down. And I'm gonna show you, you know, my big workhorse brushes primarily are the filberts and I like the ivory filberts. It's it's, it's probably what I use the most. And, but again, I, I will, you know, oftentimes do almost a whole piece, depending on the size of the canvas, with one good brush. And for me, the best brush for my usage is a filbert because, and I'll show you why, and I'm going to go ahead and just do a little demonstration. I'm gonna take a little bit of yellow ochre. And this is, for this demonstration, it's a number six. 
rosemary long filbert. And if I just were to do, I can drag across, let me put a little bit more paint thinner, just a little bit of oil. I can drag across and have a nice wide line, right? With the number six. But if I change the angle of that brush, I can have a nice, you know, pretty skinny line. And depending on how much pressure I put on that brush, if I want it to be, you know, say I wanted to start off really skinny and then get fatter, I can just add a little bit more pressure to the brush. So this is an excellent brush for me uh, for a lot of jobs that I do on a, on a piece. And so I can, you know, if this dries a little bit and I wanted to suggest a little bit of hair, I can just load my brush just on the very, 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 very tip of the brush like this. And I might, could just do a little bit of texture right inside that little line there. I'm just trying to show you that I can do a lot with one brush and I'm just taking, you, know, you can see that there's some stuff going on there and I'll do, I'll do this in a little bit of a bigger, bigger realm. So, and that was just with a number six. Now imagine if you had several different, you know, I can take a little brush like this uh, Rosemary number three, Filbert, and Again, I have often, you know, will go into a painting and just, you know, I can get some texture in there if I'm doing some, say I'm doing, you know, some grass off into a, in a field. I might put that down like this and then go in with a, a little bit of a darker color so it's at the base of the grass and just pull it up into this, you know, it, it gives for a very believable look it's with minimal effort and, you know, that, that, that works. That works for me anyway. Hopefully I've got enough light on this. So yes, the Filberts are probably by far my favorite brushes and um, they're great workhorse brushes. Now, you've heard me talk about my um, sword brushes. I like the swords and I like the dagger brushes. Of course, the dagger is the shorter version of the sword, okay? So again, for just demonstration purposes, I'm taking a little bit of yellow ochre and white, and I'm gonna suggest that I have some kind of hair, and I'm just going to give it a base, okay? Now, I can go both ways. I'm gonna put a light down, a light base down, and I'm gonna put a dark base down. And I'll show you what happens when you use. So I'm gonna go with a darker base. Usually I'll start with my, um, my cooler, darker color first. Depends on what, what species of animal I'm doing, but so, okay. So here we go. I've got this, just this, I'm gonna suggest this is fur. Now, if I take my, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna go in with the, um, the three eighths dagger, can you see? That's the three eighths dagger, ivory dagger, okay? That's shaped like this on the end. And I'm gonna go in with a little bit of a darker color. My load is never very, I don't load the brush heavily. So you can see the paint is primarily right on the edge. And I wanna go ahead and create some detail. So I'm going to that will offer you a really nice line. And I can go in here, say if I was, and I, I did this the other day, when I'm doing a bird's wing feather, and the bird's feathers, I mean, I'm sorry, the bird's wings are folded, I got a nice, I can get a nice, nice line. Um, you can see it, I can actually twist and turn, see how I can do all kinds of interesting moves here. This is also great if you're doing ribbon. Say you have ribbon falling down from, you know, someone's hair and you wanted to, um, you know, you see how I can just turn it and you almost have that serpentine look just by how you turn this brush. So if I have this and then it kind of turns down here and then it goes skinny here and then it turns around. Um, so the, these are very versatile little brushes and they have their own unique 
you know, usage. Now, just like I showed you here, I have the dark. I'm gonna go in here with a little bit of light so if I can keep my hand out of the way. So you can see that this is a great way to really lay in hair, stacking hair in there. It's also, these are brushes that I use often for whiskers. lighter in some areas. So you can see, I think you're getting the idea. These are wonderful brushes for laying in fur. Okay, so there's your daggers. And whether I'm using, you know, one of the smaller daggers, um, this is the one eighth inch or a sword brush. Basically the technique is the same. You're gonna get the same effect, just longer effect. And of course the sword brushes like this will hold more paint. So if I'm doing a long continuous line, say a horse's mane in the wind, and I need that, I, I need to start doing the application and roll it through. I'm gonna grab a sword brush instead of a dagger because this is gonna hold a little bit more paint and allow me to have that continuous line without having to reload the brush. So again, daggers daggers and swords for me are used pretty much the same depending on how much paint I gotta put in there. Okay, now this is a, uh, this is a long filbert. This is a series 278 by Rosemary. This is a natural, um, I think it's mongoose hair. So I like these brushes because I can do application and blending with them. And I use the Eclipse brushes, which are all synthetic, but basically a synthetic mongoose, kind of the same way. So if I'm, say I had to get a large surface down and I'm just really wanting to get it on there and I'm, you know, just getting it on there a little bit. You can see I can create enough texture here and I may say, well, I gotta, I gotta add some other, you know, some lighter value on top of this. And see, I can actually blend right on the canvas and this will allow me to lighten up my, see how I can make the interior aspect of this dark, very, you know, and I'm just layering it with you know lighter and lighter value, and it blends right on the canvas. These are great little brushes, and I and I use these for oh, I guess I and I use a lot of these for portraits too. So um, awesome, awesome little brush. That's the 278 long filbert. Okay. Now I like the Eclipse pointed rounds. Now you can see they're these are kind of small. This is a number four. And this little guy is a zero. This one right here is a zero. This is a zero, that's a four. And they use them the same way. But like if I was getting into the littlest crevice of something, so if I needed to say undercut, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit on this. So say I needed to have a darker value in this fur. And I've already gone in there and I needed to add some more. I might go in there with just a little tiny, um, round like this and really get in there and just put those little dark values or light values, whatever it is that I'm needing to, you can see I can load just the tip of the brush like this and I can get right in there, right in there tight. It allows me to get in real tight into some areas. So if I'm making some fur and I'm, or say I have an, an animal species like, like a badger or has what is known as a booty, colored fur, which is almost like a salt and pepper. I can get in here and just put some little black, um, you know, when you look at a bunny, like a little cottontail rabbit, their hair is a combination of dark and light all mixed in. So you're like, well, what do I start with first? You know, do I start with the light? Do I say, you know, exactly. It, what do you start with first? You only have to do both. Um, I usually start with my middle tone work my way out, <laughs> depending on 
what's necessary. But you can see I can get in there really tight with this brush and just even get in there and just do underneath some of the other hairs. Um, now, if I were doing something like an eye, for, for example, these are great for getting into the corners. These are great for making lash lines. These are great for even just doing, like, you know, if you had to do an eyebrow and you just wanted to do little short hairs like this, and I mean, I generally don't paint eyebrows in like this, but if I wanted to, and you could see how, um, what kind of detail you can get. And depending on how much pressure you put on your brush will determine how fat or how thin the line actually is. So if I put a little bit more pressure, obviously I'm gonna get a darker or thicker, darker line. But if I put less pressure on the brush, I can get a really thin line. See how, how fine you can get using the same brush. And if you're, you know, use that, your technique and you start letting it, um, letting it go with the flow here, if it's fur, which direction the fur lies, et cetera, et cetera, you can really adjust how much pressure you put on that brush. Now, you're probably asking, well, why wouldn't you just use your dagger? And the thing is, this is going to allow for me to get into little tiny sharp places where a little dagger like this, yes, indeed, this is a great little brush, but you're still going to be, you're still going to have that little angle and almost have to work with that angle. So even though these two brushes are not that different in size, they are different in the type of job that they do because you, you, you know, this has got a flatter, a flatter edge. And obviously this is a round edge. There is no edge. And, you know, I, and even when I dry my brushes, I dry them back. So they have that really sharp point. And I like to use my brushes. I mean, I really try to, my best to take care of my brushes and make sure that they're, um, that they can do the job that they were intended to do. I'm gonna zoom back out. Let's see if I can create some more space here. Um, my sables. Now, my sables are wonderful for making soft transitions. So what I might do, say if I was, I'm gonna zoom in again, see if I can find a nice little unused area. Now let's go, we'll go right in this area. So say I was, if I put two colors right next to each other, here's a, here's a yellow ochre, I'm gonna add a little bit of oil because I'm making the transition and I want that to be oily. Okay. And the reason I might would use a little bit more oil is it makes it more fluid and easy for the transition. So, and then I'm gonna put a dark brown right next to it. And here we've got that umber in there. Okay. Now, how would I use my, for me, how I use my sable Here's a good example of what I use my sables for. Now here's my little sable. They're super, super soft brushes, super soft brushes. And what I do is I'll dip my sable in oil a little bit first, get it in, make sure that it's really been mushed, the oil is mushed down into the, to the brush. And I don't want it to be drippy. And then what I'll do is I'll take the, you know, if I'm making this transition here, I'll split the difference between the two and slowly, slowly blend right there at that transition so that you're not going to see where one necessarily starts and stops. Now, when you're doing, when you're doing flesh, you don't want, necessarily, you don't always want a sharp line. And this helps me get that soft blend between the, you know, the light and the dark. And now it doesn't look as extreme, right? It's, it's a lot softer. And I can get in there with that brush. And if I need it to be bringing some of the yellow ochre into my um, umber here, I'm gonna pull some from the other side. And, you know, I can get in there and pull a little bit more in there and I can make that transition super, super soft. Okay, so. That is how I use my sables. Now, I'm not gonna lie and say I never, ever 
do my application with my sables, but I generally don't. I usually use them as blending tools. They're blending brushes for me. And, and you'll notice like a lot of times when I'm painting, and I'll zoom out for a second, when I'm painting, you'll see, you'll, you might see my brush here, blah, 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 here I am, I'm working, I'm working, and then I come down here, and then you don't see the brush. What's happening is, see all these blue tiles down here? I come, I do my work, and then I'm, I'm constantly wiping my brushes off. So I don't necessarily want a ton of paint on my brush when I'm working, and if it picks up paint, so say I'm, I'm in here and I'm in this dark area here and I wanna go over to this, this lighter area. If I have a bunch of paint, dark paint on my brush, I, I don't wanna pull it into my light area. So I will wipe my brushes off. And that's oftentimes when I'm using my paint thinner too. I just take a little bit of my paint thinner to kind of cleanse my brush. Now, this is a really old sable. This is one that I didn't even buy. And I'm pretty sure, see my mom who, is a, an artist as well and she had a professional career as an artist for years and years and years she's given up painting she doesn't paint anymore so of course i she gave me all her brushes and this is obviously one that had been my mom and you mom's brush and you can tell it's very well worn but it's still got a lot of use at it you know i'm still using it it's a good brush but um you know i have a lot of newer brushes and this is a, a pure sable um this is their series 81 from Rosemary and this, you know, it's a lot smaller, but again, I will use this for flesh tone transitions. This is, it's almost only what I use my sables for. Otherwise I can get a lot of the same kind of use out of the Eclipse uh, line of brushes from Rosemary. So, you know, it's, it's, it's all good. Now, let's see here. I'm gonna show you some, some of these little specialty brushes. This is my Smusher. <laughs> I like the name just because, and I, I got this from Rosemary. It's what they called their, this was a limited edition smooshing brush. And I think the, the story was that they used either, I don't know what it was, why it's a limited edition. If they were making it for somebody and they had used a different hair than they meant to, I don't know. But for some reason, this is a limited edition brush. But what I use the smooshing brush is, for is if I'm doing foliage like in a background or something. So say, again, for just for the purposes of this video, I'm just using these this small array of colors, but I'll go ahead and make a tree or something here. So say I have a background and I have some, like here's, you know, say here's an here's area of a dark area in a, um, a background here. I'm gonna just do this whole thing dark for just, I have that and then I have an area where there's some kind of oh look at this beautiful uh, aspen tree that's you know whatever in the background here and I might have another aspen back here um, and I don't want it to have a lot of the details but I want it to you know I want it to remain and um, um, in, in, you know relevant in the painting um, I will, I'm gonna see if I can zoom in a little bit here. I will use my swishing brush. So again, I will dip it in a little bit of oil and just go over the edges like this and just smush it in. And I can still keep my, my dark values in there. And, you know, I could just, you know, fade it off. These are great for doing foliage and backgrounds and if you needed to go back over it and and put in detail later, say on the edges of it, I might would go in with a brush like, say I went back in with, uh, for goodness sakes, I could go back in with even um, my ivory filbert. And if say the front of the tree is gonna have a lot more value, you know, a lot more detail, then I might See, now I have the soft edge there, right? So does that make sense? 
So you can see that the smushing brushes create a softer, a softer edge, which are great for using in backgrounds. I use them quite a bit. I love, love, love them. Another fun little brush, one I didn't show you initially when I was showing you my, some of my brushes, are these little novelty type brushes. Now, you can get the same effect with, um, let me see if I can hold it up. Can you see that? By using any of the brushes I just described, um, but what's nice is if you have to do a lot of grass, these are great because you can, you can, uh, let me put a little bit of oil on that. You can, uh, whether you're doing hair or grass, just with that stroke because it's already divided up for you. So, you know, this gives you a <clears throat> kind of instant grass <laughs> and you can, you can do some fun little things with these. They're not, they're not bad little brushes. I, I have some, but usually because I inherit them, I don't buy these. I've just never bought them. And maybe I just never used them enough to really appreciate what they can do. And now I'm sitting here playing with it and I'm like, oh my God, this is awesome. But these are great little um, grassy brushes. That's what I would use this for. Now, I guess, you could use it for um, for hair as well. I don't know that I would. You have to forgive me. I, I know it's just kind of wonky here. I had a little time lapse. I had to teach a class and in that time, the sun is <laughs> like really high over here on the side of me and it's, uh, it's creating some funky little shadows. But anyway, novelty brushes like this are fun and do have really good uh, you know, you can get some interesting little effects. I mean, you could probably, it came up here on the top. Try to think, I, it's, it's almost too, um, like almost creates too much direction. That's always perfect. And I don't think the world is that way. So that's why I probably don't use these. Um, but I imagine that if you really, you know, maybe if you just did, let's see what if I get to play here. It just kind of went straight up with it now. Nah. You'd really have to play with these. I have used these for, oh, like sea oats on, you know, on a beach scene or something like that because those tend to be pretty uniform, but eh, that's, that's one of these brushes and they're fun, they're fun. <clears throat> now I use other tools that, if you watch my videos, I'll, I am pretty, pretty much love these little paint scrapers. Now, if you're doing something where, if you're doing an Ala Prima piece and you're doing all wet, you know, and you have a large wet area and, and you need to, uh, you can actually scrape paint off like this. And so that's removing the paint. These are wonderful when making whiskers too. And I mentioned the, the uh, swords and the dagger brushes for that. But if I'm doing an Ala Prima piece and it, everything's like wet, I might not get the same effect um, as I would as if I'm taking the paint off. And that's one of the things that I use these paint scrapers for. And another thing that I like to use the paint scrapers for is again, if I'm doing an Ala Prima piece and let me just do it up here. If I'm doing an Ala Prima piece and I have a completely, you know, it's all wet canvas and I need to sign a piece. These are really nifty doing signatures. So yeah, you, then there's that. So you can use these. These are wonderful. And um, it's funny, I painted for years and never even knew about these. And one of my students is the one who showed these to me. And so I have to say folks, I probably learn <laughs> as much from my students as I hope that they're learning from me. So, you know, there's that. But yeah, I, I have loved using a paint scraper. Now, I had kind of showed you some of these bigger brushes. Yeah, these are big old chunky monkeys here. I use these generally on a large canvas. Now, but what I like, and, and basically what this brush does, this brush does, but this just does it on a larger scale. And if I'm having an area, kind of like what I showed earlier of how 
I blend with a sable. Of course, my sables tend to be pretty small. But so, say I have white paint here, and I have this, you know, yellow ochre here, and then I have a nice dark color here. I'm gonna just go, go ahead and go black. What's nice about these is if I just dip in a little bit of oil, clean brush, and I needed to just, you know, blend right here on the edges, I can just kind of blend it and go across the whole thing and make a very, very subtle, almost like an ombre. And these are great for blending. Um, and I'm not really showing that too well here, but that's what I use these for. I do a lot more blending with these. And then as I'm moving across, I'm just kind of So it's, it's a softer look. You're not seeing a very like a white, yellow, and you know, like a Neapolitan ice cream. <laughs> you see a little bit more of a blend to them. And that's what I use these for. Um, you know, and I oftentimes will do a grounding to a canvas, meaning I will paint a surface, just kind of some kind of neutral color, you know, and I may just go in just like this with a brush like this and have this, you know, kind of non-white background before I do my actual painting. And I'll use a, quite a bit of paint thinner. And so these are great for spreading like this. You know, I can go ahead and get a good spread on here. And then if I was gonna do my actual painting, you know, after this dries and I'd go in and do what I was gonna do, or I might use something like that and go in then with a clean brush and remove paint. So I can come in here and actually take paint off with another brush, just like you see here and I can get, you know, create my, um, kind of like my underpainting by removing paint. I'll do what I call, a, you know, wiping out. And um, so, I mean, there's so many different uses for different brushes and different tools. And I guess what I was hoping today was just an example of some of the things that I, you know, how I use my brushes and why I have so many brushes. Again, it all goes back to the right tool for the job. And I hope this demonstrates uh, what I was talking about. When I am done washing them, now I almost always wash my brushes in Murphy soap. Now, Murphy soap is an incredible way to clean oil out of your brushes. It'll get oil out of your clothes, <laughs> out of your hair, <laughs> off your hands. And it's, it smells good, it's non-toxic, it's gentle, you know, it's, it doesn't just strip everything. And it's great for washing your brushes off. I wanna say that once, when I wash my brushes, and you can check out one of my earliest videos, one of my earliest, earliest vid videos, it's in my, uh, in my uh, quick tips, I believe, uh, playlist, check it out. It just show you how I wash brushes. But when I'm finished washing a brush, I love, love, love to get it back into the shape that it originally started with. While it's wet, just like that. See, now it's nice and sharp. And it will be like that when I go back to use it. So I will go, and I'm, I'm one who really likes to take care of her brushes. I mean, seriously, I want them to work for me for a long time. And so, like, here's my little smusher. It's supposed to be pretty flat and blunt. That's how, you know, I wanna make sure it's nice and supple because I need it. I don't want to leave paint in it and keep it, get it all stiff and icky and it won't work for me. So I'll go through basically all the brushes I just used for this demonstration. And you know, obviously there's a little bit of water still coming off on this um, brush. So, you know, I like to, and especially these are, these are this one's a real hair brush. This is um, one of the, this is the long flat, uh, the 278 series by Rosemary. So I believe if I'm not mistaken that it's mongoose. So um, I'm gonna make sure that it's, you know, I'm gonna keep it in my, its best possible shape. And uh, so that's really important to me because I know when I reach for a brush, it's, gonna, it's not gonna be all frayed and all messed up. It's not gonna have a ton of paint uh, stuck in it. And again, that's what I do. I just go ahead and put, pull, them back into, pull them back into shape. 
and uh, there we go. So that's good. So take care of your brushes, folks, and you'll get lots and lots of good wear out of them if you do, um, especially if you're buying really expensive brushes. You know, c consider it kind of an investment in your work. Again, the right tool for the job. You want to take care of your tools. <laughs> so here I am. I'm sitting here just gently um, putting all my brushes back into back into shape. So you can see this one's you know got a good point on it. Nice and I want to keep it that way. So after I wash it, I go ahead form its shape. Here's my, you know, one of my daggers. Yep. And, and you know, over time, brushes are going to wear out. So let's face it, they, they, they're, no matter how well we take care of them, they will wear out. And yes, I'm putting them back into, back into form here. But I had mentioned earlier that this is an old brush. I would have to venture to guess that this number eight Richardson um, red sable is probably 20, 30 years old. And the reason I say that is because my mother, it was one of my mom's brushes. And I'm guessing that, you know, she's not really been doing too much painting in a long, long time. So if I'm having one of her sables, it's when she was doing portraits. And let's, you know, it, this, this is probably a 20, 30 year old brush and I'm still using it taking care of brushes. So, but you can see it does have some, for this little sable, it does have some wear and tear. Now, here's another interesting fact. Sometimes some of the brushes that I've gotten from my mom have been fashioned. Um, when I say fashion, and let's see if I can find it. Give me just a second and I will find what I'm, what I'm looking for. Okay, as far as fashion goes. Now, this is another one of my mom's brushes. And it started out as a, let's see, a Jenkins, I guess it is. Jenkins, it's so old that it's, it's worn off. So you can't really, you can't really read it. But it was a filbert. And um, this was an old badger hair brush. It's been worn down. You know, she wore it down. She used it, she used it. And oftentimes when a brush gets frayed, and let's face it folks, even the best brushes get frayed. I mean, I have here some, some of my really old ones, and these are 278 series Rosemary's. So these are natural hair brushes, and probably, you know, they started out as, these were long filberts. Um, they're no longer <laughs> filbert shape. Remember, filberts, they're shaped like this. <laughs> and this is a long filbert eclipse. And this is a 278 series. The Eclipse is a synthetic. These are natural hair. So I think synthetics hold up longer. That's just me. Maybe I'm rougher on, I, I don't know, for whatever reason. But just because these brushes no longer have their shape, perhaps they are very much can be used as a smusher because look at them. They are almost like my little smusher brush that you saw earlier. It's already back, so I'm not gonna try to retrieve it. But there you have it. So even though this is not being used for its initial intended purpose, when I bought this brush anymore, it is still a very useful brush. And I continue to use it um, for blending. These, these are great for blending. And because they are a natural hair, um, you know, they, they're just a little bit softer. And it, it, it does help to just give them a little bit of, you know, I could probably go ahead and use some Murphy soap and some conditioner to this, and I could probably get these close to shape. But why? You know, I, I use them the way they are. Um, I just use them differently than when they, when they were new. So there you have it. I do use those brushes as well. And like I said, some of these brushes that my mom fashioned, and I say she fashioned them because I can remember my mother taking a razor blade. As, when I was a kid, she would, she would just like start to sculpt, if you will, carve out her brushes for a different use. Once they got to that point, she obviously this one got nubbed down. She probably was using this as a smusher. So there you have it. So brushes can have a new life even after their uh, intended purpose. When you you know when you purchased them, you may have used them differently then. You can use them a different way now. So there you have it. 
Well, I hope I shed a little light today on the different brushes that I use and their usage. And, you know, there's more than one way to skin a cat. And I was just really showing you how I use my brushes and what I get out of my brushes. Seriously, I have been known to do some of my smaller pieces with one good filbert. I mean, I can knock out a painting with one good brush. And, and it, some are more versatile than others, but obviously there is, you know, there's always the right tool for the job. And I hope that this today's video demonstrated that. So again, thanks so much for being here today. And if you are my subscribers, thanks as always. And if you're not, please consider subscribing. And if you wanna see more in-depth videos like today's video and, and others, please check out my Patreon page. And uh, yeah, thanks so much for being here. And again, from Kingsport, Tennessee, see ya.